Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm gonna teach you guys how to make ballistic gel at home. All right guys, first things first, you're gonna need something to mix it all in. I don't like to use the things that I have around the house to make ballistics gel, so I just went to Walmart and got myself some of these really inexpensive aluminum containers. They're about $1.50 each. I got three of them just so that I knew it was gonna be able to hold the weight of the water. For me, I'm trying to make uh, a pretty good amount of ballistics gel. So I poured about six pounds of tap water into this container. You can use distilled water or you can use tap water. I believe it really doesn't make a difference. So it's of your choosing. Uh, again, make sure it's cold though. The next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need Knox gel. You can find this in Walmart, uh, most grocery stores, uh, but when you go to the grocery store, you're probably going to find the box variation of it, and it's going to be uh, just individual packets. I recommend getting this from Amazon, like I'm showing you here. It's the pound container. You get a lot more gelatin versus what you're going to get at any of the uh, retail stores, so definitely check it out. If you guys can get this, some places I know in the UK can't actually get this brand, but I'm pretty sure there's probably... Um, things that are very similar in your area. But the Knox one uh, is the one I'm gonna go with. It's not gonna give you a clear gel. It's gonna give you kind of like an orange uh, tinted gel, but that's totally fine. We got something that we're gonna do uh, with our mixture that's gonna help make it more transparent, but I'll show you that in just a minute. The ratio that you need for ballistics gel is eight to one. So one part gel to eight parts water. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna slowly start pouring it in and mixing it while you're pouring it in. Again, make sure that it's cold tap water and take your time, okay? Take your time. Don't just clump it in there or throw it all in there because it's gonna be clumpy if you do. So pour a little bit in there, stir, 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 stir. And it's gonna take some time, guys, to kind of get all the clumps out, but just take your time. I might fast forward this, but yeah, you can see that it's kind of clumping up here. If you have uh, like a electronic mixer, it's probably gonna be a lot better. I don't have one of those, uh, so I'm just gonna kind of take my turn, uh, take my time, take my time is what I'm trying to say, and stir this thoroughly. Eventually, the texture that you're looking for is kind of like an applesauce texture. I'll get there here in a little bit though, I'm not even there yet. But that's the texture that you're looking for is an applesauce texture. and what I've done is I've gotten back the gelatin. As you can see, the foam is on the top here. You can leave it, but just to kind of show you the consistency we're looking for is kind of like that gel. It's not totally hard or anything like that. It's just kind of, it's like, a, it's like applesauce. It's like cold applesauce. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place this in the oven. What I like to do is I like to set my oven for 425 degrees. I know other people like to boil it, but since we have it in this type of pan, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven here. And I'm just gonna let it sit there. Over time, it is going to melt down into a liquid. When it melts down into a liquid, what I'm gonna to add to it is this hydrogen peroxide that I got. We're gonna put in about 15 ounces. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it a lot more transparent. Uh, and as I'm doing it, I'll show you. But for now, we're gonna cut over. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check to see where we're at. It's been about 20 minutes since we put it into the oven. There we go. As you can see, the top layer is kind of crusting. You can just scoop that off. Right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add in 
are hydrogen peroxide. We're going to mix it up just a little bit, make sure that it spreads throughout. Alright, so the next thing I want to share with you guys is I picked these containers up, which were perfect for creating a gel block. These are really cheap, but very durable uh, storage containers. You can find them at Walmart. Uh, they think they're about $5 a piece. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in my sink and carefully pour this in to here and then I'm going to put it in the fridge. Now as you poured it in, of course there might be some bubbles that float to the top. You can just scrape it off. So now we're just going to go ahead and take it and stick it in our refrigerator. And I like, this is just me, you don't have to do this, but I like to leave it a little bit uncapped. A little bit of ventilation there, just like that. And we'll All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and open these up. It's been about 12 hours since we put them in the refrigerator outside. Mind you, it is really cold outside even without being in the refrigerator. So I don't know if it did any difference uh, as far as the temperature goes. It does feel like it was just a little bit more cold than usual. Nonetheless though, I'm pretty sure everything's fine from the look of it from the outside looking in, it does look like it's absolutely fine. Uh, I also wanna say as I'm saying that, if you guys can't tell already, one is actually darker than the other. This is the one that I was showing you guys uh, in the video where I use hydrogen peroxide to actually make it more transparent. And this is my first ever um, batch that I tried to make uh, with just the gelatin, just the water. And as you can see, there's a huge difference already. I can't wait to actually open these up uh, and see it actually firsthand. Another thing I wanna say to you guys before we open it up is, again, one of the things I really liked about buying this as our mold box is not only is it a great mold box it can withhold the temperatures but i can carry it i can carry it there's no there's like no worry that i'm gonna spill something in transporting it when it's hot uh definitely not obviously when it's cold but even when it's cold right like i don't have to hold the cold box i can just carry it all right guys so we're gonna open up this batch first now if you guys don't remember like i said this is the one that i actually already did prior so it was already formed out in the pan i shot it with a less than lethal rifle uh i'm sorry less than lethal launcher and then i also shot it with my 30 caliber pellet rifle uh but i wanted to have it in a better form so i reheated it and i just transferred it into this box and rechilled it we're gonna go ahead and open it up and see how it turned out looks pretty good now i am going to have to break it apart oh, it's kind of watery it's kind of watery so there's a really good lesson learned here when you put your mixture in the refrigerator don't shut the lid on it because all the condensation is going to rise and hit the top of the lid and then all of it's going to drip back down on the top of your mold and it's going to be all wet and gooey uh, it's not that bad you can just pat it off and as you can see it's totally fine now i'm going to have to break this there you go, and it's doing it pretty well. Away from the box, another great reason why I chose this plastic box is because you can break it uh, from the sides pretty easily. Now I'm just gonna have to go ahead and get my fingers in and start, yeah, there we go. Start pulling it out slowly. I bet you, I bet you it'll just come out too. Look, yeah, it's happening. It's just kind of falling out now. You don't want to tear the sides, so do your best not to not to mess it up completely, but there you go. There we go. Look at that. We got our homemade ballistics gel. 
So look at the results, guys. This is the batch that we did with hydrogen peroxide. This is the one that we did without. This is my first batch. This is just the gelatin, just the water mixture. And this is the one that we put our ratio of hydrogen peroxide into it. And you can see, look at that. Just look at that. Look at the difference there, guys. Matter of fact, let me grab the, um, let me grab the camera here and let me see if you guys can get a better view of it. Yeah, look at that, guys. This is the one with hydrogen peroxide. You can see straight through that, looks good. And this is the one without. Still looks really, really good, but just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And look at that. Uh, I broke it just a little bit there. I broke it just a little bit there. I wonder if my ratios are, are good on this. I might have to actually tweak it a little bit. Um, this one feels firmer. I wonder if my ratios were thrown off just a little bit because I tried to use hydrogen peroxide. So I, I, I'm guessing this is softer. I don't think that this is actually gonna meet uh, the standard uh, for the FBI test, right? Which is like a 10% ballistic gel. What you do is you take a BB gun and you shoot it and if it goes uh, three inches, about three inches into the gelatin, that's uh, what they average as a good 10% ballistic gel. Uh, this one kind of feels like it might be pretty good. Uh, this one, it definitely feels a little bit more it doesn't feel as, you know, it doesn't feel, it feels softer, I guess, more flexible. Uh, this one, not so much, it actually feels pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and test it. I'm, I'm suspecting this one might have to play around with just a little bit. And this one though, might be pretty good. Uh, we're going to shoot these though with the BB gun uh, and we're going to see how we do.